<laughs> Doug Evans, welcome to the Biohacking Secrets Show. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Anthony. I've been looking forward to this all week. Yeah, me too. You know, it's it's a little bit of uh, e exciting, coincidental, serendipitous timing because when we're reaching out to guests and there's someone like you that I want to talk to, I kind of send a list to one of, one of the people on our team and they reach out. And I never really know exactly when people are going to be scheduled. But just this week, I dove deep into sprouts completely independent of this conversation i'm making these sprouted smoothies and i'm excited to kind of pick your brain and hear maybe some of the ways that i could make my superfood smoothies even more special and super yeah well let, let's like you know make no bones about it you were i planted the seed you know publicly in april and it got you last week i so think so let's just be really clear Yes, like that's that's what happened. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, maybe, but you know, before we kind of get into the nitty gritty and how our listeners can use sprouts and superfoods to make their life uh, better, whether they're trying to heal or or just achieve uh, peak performance, share us a little bit. Uh, share with us a little bit of your origin story and how you got into this. Yeah, I mean, I grew up as a New York City juvenile delinquent, jumped out and you know just did crazy things as a teenager, joined the U.S. Army when I was 17 years old as a paratrooper in the oh, 82nd boy. Airborne. And then, then I hustled for the next 15 years, just working, just to make sure I wasn't in poverty, that I had some financial freedom and other things. And along the way, um, I got a little pudgy, right? I got a little pudgy and a little lethargic and like, that was cool with me because I was still having a great time. You were but getting older. I was getting older, <laughs> right? And then I turned 33 and my aunt got diabetes. They chopped off her feet below her ankles. My uncle got heart disease and died. My other aunt got IBS and colitis and all sorts of things. And then she died. Then my other uncle died. And then my mother got stomach cancer and she died. Then my father got heart disease and died in the same hospital as my mother. And then my brother became obese, diabetic, atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and had the first of three strokes and a heart attack. So I was like, holy camoly, like we're genetically cursed, right? I, I better get my affairs in order because I'm not gonna be living too long. And they say when the student is ready, the teacher will come. So I had this teacher come to me in the middle of the night and she was plant-based, she was a vegan. I never heard the term vegan before. I thought it was vegetarian, like short for vegetarian vegan. And in a two week period, I went cold cucumber and went from eating cooked food, processed food, refined food, meat, dairy, animal products, street food, like every bit of garbage, candy. I remember, because I thought I was rich, I would buy these big blocks of rock candy. And I loved the high I would get as I would sink my teeth into the rocks. And I almost bought my own um, cotton candy machine because I loved like the sugar and like, I didn't want to wait to go to a sporting event or a circus to get my cotton candy. Like I just loved refined sugar. That's dedication. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm over the top. And so once I heard about that, like I went cold cucumber and then all of a sudden I'm eating fresh, ripe, raw, organic fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, cold pressed juices, um, seaweeds, sprouts, drinking wheatgrass, and that was, believe it or not, 21 years ago. Never looked back, huh? Never looked back. I mean, I'm 54 years old and full throttle. I, I notice even in a matter of days, if I'm eating more the way that you just described, <clears throat> the, the need for caffeine or that sort of stuff is just like it falls by the wayside you don't even notice that like your body's just running better and cleaner at least at least for me um what, what are some of the biggest objections you get from people when you describe your lifestyle you know 
I, too expensive. I, mean, I don't have the time for that. You know, I, I think they think I'm an alien. Yeah. Right. It, it's so polarizing to the normal like way of living. Yeah. That I've I've done a really good job of like toning it down. <laughs> yeah. Like, for, don't do that. Don't do that on our account. Uh, the the Biohacking oh, no, no, Secrets no. Show listeners, we like extreme. No, no, I'm <laughs> I'm my authentic self. But when I say tone it down for 18 years. Like, you know, in the back of my mind, you know, I would be saying cook food is poison. Don't eat this. Don't do this. And telling other people, you know, what to eat, what not to eat. And, you know, when I decided to launch this sprout journey, right. And I had this like awakening epiphany, and we'll get into that about sprouts. I then realized that I didn't care what other people ate or not. Right. I wasn't going to tell them like, hey, you know, Anthony, don't smoke that cigarette. Don't eat that cheeseburger. You know, like don't like that salmon that you think is good for you is laden with mercury and indigestible, you know, um, blah, blah. Like I gave all that up. Right. And what I said was it's pretty well known, still disputed because people will dispute anything that vegetables are good for you. Right. Do you think vegetables are good for you, Anthony? I do. Yes. Okay. So vegetables are good for you and sprouts are a vegetable. So if if vegetables are good for you, sprouts are vegetable. What I wanted to do is make it easy and accessible for everyone to have their own vegetable garden. And the notion and kind of consciousness of gardening was you needed soil, you needed land, you needed sunshine, you needed sprinklers, you're on your knees, you're blah, blah, that whole story. And when I moved to the desert, and I moved to the Mojave Desert, I moved to a little hot springs oasis called Wonder Valley Hot Springs. By appointment, you could book a room or book a soak in the hot springs, right? So when I moved here, I realized not only am I in the desert, I'm in a food desert and I wasn't going to be driving three hours each way to get to civilization or three hours round trip to get to civilization, to get to a health food store or to get to a vegan restaurant. So I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? And normally if you grow food, it takes weeks or months or years to grow your own food. And I was like, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry now. And it was like, boom, the lightning bolt hit. It like went right in, polarizing. It was like a hallelujah moment for me that I was like, I could grow my own sprouts. And within literally days, not weeks, months, or years, days using mason jars, cheesecloth, and seeds and adding water, hallelujah, I was growing my own food. And within one month, in one cubic foot, I was eating, growing and eating most of my own calories were sprouts. Wow. So so that was like this mind turner. Like all of a sudden, like I'm eating sprouts, I'm high energy, I'm sovereign, I'm independent, I'm autonomous. And then the question was, am I missing something, right? Am I overlooking some micronutrients, some polyphenol, some prebiotic? Like, am I missing something? So I got on the phone and in my 21 year health journey, I met a lot of people, Mark Hyman, Dean Ornish, Dr. Oz, Joe Mercola, um, uh, Joel Kahn, um, nutritionists, and I'm calling every one of them up and talking to them about sprouts. And some of these guys, as you know, Mark Hyman, functional medicine, Dr. Josh Axe, keto diet, Dean Ornish, and Joel Kahn, plant-based. And what they all had in common, they all loved sprouts. Yeah. And I'm like, I couldn't get enough. Like, I was like, 
if you all love sprouts, how come you're not like out there beating your chest, telling the whole world eat sprouts? Mm -hmm. And like, well, we talk about it, but like, this is my thing. This is my thing. So that's when I had like the vision that I was going to write the book on sprouts. Like I was going to write the sprout book. And I've and, got a, I've got a copy of that in yeah. root as we yeah. speak. Well, well, prior to writing that book, I had never written anything other than an email, right? I never went to college. I wrote emails and texts. And here I was taking on the challenge of my life, writing 60,000 words, 288 pages, you know, with one of the largest publishers in the world, because I wanted to make sure that the book had the global distribution, that this book got out there. Because if I felt like I was sleeping under a rock, then most of the world was sleeping under, under a rock because I've been around the world and you see sprouts in certain Asian cuisines, right? And you see alfalfa sprouts in health food stores and on sandwiches. And there was a little cameo in Woody Allen's Annie Hall where, you know, he's mocking hippy dippy trippies with alfalfa sprouts. <laughs> but otherwise, sprouts are virtually invisible. So mason jars, cheesecloth, and seeds, just add water. Yeah. So simple. Stuff that, like, I mean, you can get, if, if you don't have any of, of, of those things, you can order them right away. Um, I, I, I did a little bit of sprouting, and, you know, back when I was living in, in a Chicago high-rise. It can be done anywhere. It's not uh, it's not something that takes up a lot of space, but let's talk a little bit about why you love sprouts so much. And then I'm kind of curious, like with all of your wisdom, what what sprouts stand out above the rest, you know, for okay. for people that have limited uh, space, time, money, et cetera. Yeah, I, I mean, I the, the main reason I love sprouts, right, are to me, sprouts are vegetables. Vegetables are good for you. Right? right. The second thing are sprouts are very fast growing, like incredibly fast growing. They're incredibly affordable, right? Like you can buy, I buy my sprouts in 35, ba 35 pound buckets. I'm going to ask my lovely wife, my wifey, could you, Savan, could you bring me a bucket? Um, so I buy them in bulk. And, and where do you buy them from? Um, I buy them from Sprout Man or True Leaf Market, but just look at this. This is look at bigger than my head, right? Huge, like thirty-five pound bucket, handy and, pantry seeds and grain bucket, <laughs> and and there's organic sprouting seeds. Thank you so much. And and the the sprouts like are living plant organisms in a dormant state. Right. So it's like the history of the universe in one tiny seed. Really? And the seed may look like a pebble. If you drop it, it will bounce. And you do a little energy work on it, like by adding water to it. Yeah. And this bad boy will begin to germinate. And let's just take lentils for a second, right? If you ate a raw lentil, you would crack your tooth, right? right? You just put a lentil in your mouth, you crack your tooth. If you cook it, lentils are super nutritious. They're a staple of, of the diets around the world. When you sprout the lentil in 36 hours, you're doubling the antioxidant levels of that lentil. You're tripling the vitamin C and you are quadrupling the volume of food that you're getting. So, so think about that, something as simple as a lentil, not to mention when you're sprouting the lentil, you're taking the lentil and going through a biological transformation, the equivalent of taking a caterpillar turning into a butterfly that this lentil will actually turn into a vegetable and grow and will grow leaves. And you're able to do this without soil, 
without sunshine, without fertilizer. So if you think about food sovereignty and you think about the health of, of yourself and feeding yourself, the ability to grow your own organic vegetables in a tight, in a tight, like, um, amount of, of square footage, there's no excuses. Like everybody can be growing sprouts anywhere. And so number one, why am I, why am I like enthusiastic about sprouts? Number one, sprouts are a food. Okay. Number two, Sprouts are vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, right? So instead of taking a synthetic multivitamin or a protein powder or some extracted things, you can grow your own vitamins. So you need more folate, you can grow vitamins. You want omega-3s, you could sprout chia and flax. You want um, vitamin C, it's in every sprout. You want soluble, insoluble fiber. You want prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants. They're all in the sprouts. Every single benefit of whole food, plant-based diet and vegetables exists in sprouts. Now, the third thing, and I'm going to preface this because it makes me sound like I'm full of it, okay? So the third thing, and I'm going to preface this, that do your own research, okay? My research led to number three is sprouts are medicine. That sprouts, whether it's the broccoli sprouts um, and um, becoming the precursor to sulforaphane because they contain glucoraphanin and myrosinase, and that there's now over a thousand research papers published in top journals about the how they're testing how broccoli sprouts will kill cancer cells, how they're treating um, autism with broccoli sprouts because they create the heat shock proteins in people with autism or just in a general level. And this isn't spa- sprout specific. This is kind of plant-based medicine, plant-based diet, whole food plant-based. If you have diabetes or obesity, and you're eating whole food plant-based without salt, oil, and sugar, you can regulate your insulin levels. You can lose weight because you're getting more fiber, less calories, less processed food. Well, that can be achieved through sprouts. Did I hear you say that there's a lot there to unpack, but that broccoli sprouts have an effect on heat shock proteins? Absolutely. The, the sulforaphane creates heat shock proteins that um, reduce symptoms of autism. Wow, interesting. You can, you can look, I did an interview on my Instagram, Doug Evans, with Dr. Jed Fahey, who was the lead researcher at Johns Hopkins University, you know, on broccoli sprouts. Yeah, fascinating, fascinating. Okay, so you get these 35 pound buckets. You mentioned Sprout Man, and then you said True something? True Leaf Market. True Leaf Market. Let's say our, our listeners right now, they're loving what you're sharing. Step one, they go to Amazon, they pick up a copy of the Sprout book. Yeah. Step two, they want to take some some action and have the materials ready so they can hit the ground running when the book arrives. What do they do? They go on Sprout Man. They go on True Leaf Market. They 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 pick up what it, what what sprouts, yeah. what materials. Well, look, I, I think the, the the core ingredients. And um, w- would you please hand me the lentil jar, please? So the key things are: I have a chapter in my book called "Junkyard Dog," yeah. about basically taking other people's junk, right, or your own junk or your own waste, and this is out of control. This is a wow. one gallon glass jar yeah. that restaurants normally throw out. Like they yeah. may get pickles in it or, or roasted peppers, um, yeah. but they throw these things out. You get a rubber band and yeah. some organic cheesecloth. Check this out. This was two cups of lentils. And it filled up eight and a half cups in a whole gallon jar. 
So amazing. So th- a giant, giant one gallon glass jars filled from top to bottom with these sprouted lentils. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And you could take the sprouted lentils. I'm going to give you guys a recipe that's not even in my book. You take right. the sprouted lentils, you take a tahini, you take some tahini, and I use the artisana tahini I buy in 17 pound buckets of raw tahini, right? For a hundred bucks, right? Yeah. So you're getting it for like three dollars a pound as opposed to getting a little jar for seventeen dollars, yeah. right? And then you get zucchini, fresh zucchini. So you take fresh zucchini, you take the sprouted lentils and you take tahini and you make a dip and you could just put anything in it. Peppers, you know, bell peppers, celery, cucumber, romaine lettuce, baby things, just put everything on it. And you're getting this super nutritious and you could replace the sprouted lentils with sprouted garbanzo beans, with sprouted green peas, basically all those. And this is mind boggling. And I know you know a hell of a lot about nutrition and biohacking. One cup of garbanzo beans sprouted 380 calories. Think about that caloric density and 36 grams of protein, like in a cup of sprouted garbanzo beans. Yeah. So you eat those, you feel full and you feel light simultaneously. And and much more digestible than the way that people traditionally eat beans or legumes. Am I, am I right? A hundred, a hundred percent. Because in the sprouting process, you reduce the phytic acid, Mm -hmm. you eliminate and reduce the enzyme inhibitors, which are keeping it in that dormant state, right. and you're unleashing that life force. There's this is alchemy that's going on, mm-hmm. right? And that's where I, I felt like, whoa, everybody needs to wake up to sprouting. Like this is the future of food is sprouting, and it's the it's you know talk about back to the future. There would be no life on this planet as we know it if there wasn't sprouting, Mm -hmm. period. Except sprouting was used for thousands of years to take these seeds, sprout them, plant them, grow into mature vegetables. But I don't have the time, I don't have the place to grow a complete organic garden, but I do have water and I have sprouting seeds and i've got cheesecloth i've got unbleached paper towels i've got mason jars i've got empty pasta jars i've got um spray misters like from home depot and all of a sudden i'm able to grow a complete balanced diet complete balanced diet right i'm going to repeat that one more time a complete balanced diet that's sprout centric. Fascinating. A couple of quick questions. What percentage of your diet would you say is like raw and plant-based? My diet today is a hundred percent raw and plant-based. A hundred percent raw and plant-based. And we're not talking about like pseudo foods and like oh no, no. gluten-free fake pizzas or something. You're talking about plants with their life force in them. Oh yeah. I eat fruits. Mm -hmm. vegetables, seeds, nuts, seaweeds, um, fermented vegetables, like our own homemade sauerkrauts, Mm -hmm. um, seaweeds, and sprouts. So healthier than just about anyone who's listening to this podcast right now. I'm not just seeing, knowing what we know many people eat. What would you estimate you spend on food, groceries, anything that's you know, on, a, on like a monthly basis, 150 bucks. So you're eating a hundred percent raw and plant-based for 150 bucks a month. Yeah. I mean, I, I, on a expensive month, maybe 200, 200 bucks. And then, okay. So the, the, the cost objection just went out the window and then, but yeah, there's probably a ton of upfront costs. I know you mentioned your junkyard dog story. What would someone need to put in to, to get to a place where they could be eating for 150, 200 bucks a month. I mean, if, if someone were to, to buy like 
the big 35 pound bucket of the protein sprouts, yeah. those are about $125 delivered, right? Mm-hmm. And that 35 pounds will literally yield, you know, well over a hundred pounds of food, right? So if you think about a hundred pounds of food, how many pounds you need to eat it, it, per day of food, right? right. So it, it's it, the, the math and you could do the calculus on your own. So to me, the money, like the more money comes in when I start and even now, I buy the 200 pack of organic seaweeds, the organic nori, and I get 200 sheets of nori, I think for 70 bucks, right? So it's like 33 cents a sheet. And so- Where are you getting those from? I'm I'm buying those on Amazon. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, I used to buy the nori in a 10 pack, and then I bought the 50 pack, and now I buy the 200 pack um, and it's just great. And what do you do with, with, with the nori? I mean, I did a post like last week where I take the nori, I lay it out, I smush an avocado on it. And then whatever sprouts are handy, like I just put, you know, two handfuls of the sprouts and I roll into a wrap and then just eat it. Nice. All right. Easy. I, I, I feel like this is, it's not, it's not intimidating. It's not overwhelming. It's economical. It's a, I think about my cousin who has three kids. She's a single mom. And like, I'd sort of justified in my head that some of the reason they didn't eat so well was because of cost. And like, you just kind of blew that out the window. I know they're spending a lot more than that. You know, it's kind of like Ikea, right? If you think about Ikea before there was Ikea, right? Which is before our time, right? Like, I don't know how old you are. Um, If you wanted furniture, you went to the furniture store, you picked out some furniture, maybe they had a floor model, but most likely, you know, furniture was custom made for you, pre-ordered and took weeks or months. And then it eventually came and you paid a lot of money for it. And maybe if you were, you know, a Quaker, you know, or something, you made your own furniture, but it was a disaster. Right. What I, Ikea came along and said, hey, we're going to have world class Swiss design. All right. Swedish design. Thank you. My wife just corrected me. Swedish <laughs> design. Right. You'll have world class Swedish design. And but you're going to have to, you know, have some skin in the game. You're going to have to come pick it up yeah. and then you're going to have to put it together. But then you're going to get something faster and better and cheaper than the old way. Right. And I, that's the way I kind of look at sprouting. You order the seeds, you order the jars, you get the things and, you know, all of a sudden you're set up and then you get momentum and it's like snowballing. And you talk about your, um, you know, a woman with single mother with three kids, kids, like look on my Instagram. I, I posted back to back eight year old kids you know, sprouting, knowing more about the science. Like this one woman, this one woman, this girl, eight-year-old girl was doing um, a science project and she was stressing the sprouts under various thermatic temperature conditions to see whether they affected the growth. Wow. Eight-year-old. Yeah. Eight years old. So I, I think that get the kids involved. Yeah. Get the kids involved early on sprouting and sit with them and talk to them like they're adults. I'm kind of excited to do it. I feel I feel like it is a little bit of a science fair type experiment. (laughs) Well, what did you learn in your deep dive about sprouting last week? You know, I didn't even do too much of a deep dive. I was reading a book on uh, the 12 steps to a raw diet. And it got me kind of excited about having more raw stuff in in my day to day, and <clears throat> just from practical for practicality purposes, I ran to Whole Foods and I bought a bunch of kale sprouts, sunflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, and then some different mixes so I could start hucking them into my smoothies. Yeah, and, you know, I had a huge sprout salad today. Um, 
it, it just seemed like it, that was one of the more practical ways to really pack nutrient density and some of these benefits of, of certain raw nutritional powerhouses into my day, you know, but I, I, I didn't get too deep into the science of it. Yeah. I mean, look, I think the science is very, very powerful. And I think there's been, you know, a lot of research starting to come out in the last 24, 36 months of sprouts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my, my mission is really to be like the match to lighter fluid. Like yeah. I want to light this baby up. Yeah. So for people that are, are feeling as fired up as, as I am, and you are about sprouts, um, and they're like, okay, how do I sprout? What do I, what do I do? Where do I start? Tell me, just tell me what to do. What do you say, Doug? I say, um, buy my book. The sprout right? book on Amazon. The sprout book on Amazon or tell your local bookseller to, to order it. It's available everywhere. Um, s- start watching some of the videos and information that I've been posting on Instagram. At which Doug is, Evans, D-O-U-G-E-V-A-N-S. Yeah, very simple there. I'd say find some large glass jars, right? The 64-ounce mason jars, the ball mason jars. There's something, you know, I did a, in, I did a Instagram live with Dr. Bill Weishevitz, um, the God Health MD who wrote Fiber Fueled. And yeah. we listed in the comments on his post and my post of our Instagram live that just went through the roof. I mean, the engagement was incredible, um, but we posted all the resources right there. So like every, you could copy them right off of there and repost them nice. in, in the spirit of transparency. Yeah. And um, sprout. And then I would say the the seeds, you can't, if you're sprouting for food, the lentils and legumes are like easy and easy to start. If you're sprouting for nutrition, like you want to get a variety, like chia and flax are amazing source of medium chain fatty acids, omega threes, mm-hmm. right? And when you're sprouting the chia, you also get chlorophyll, you get fiber, soluble, insoluble fiber, you get the protein. So you get all the benefits of this superfood chia and you get it in a living form, vegetable format. So I love sprouting chia. Um, Broccoli sprouts, part of the cruciferous family of vegetables. Like I was doing an interview with Rip Esselstyn, right, ex-firefighter, and research came out that broccoli sprouts and sulforaphane detoxify pollutants from the lungs. So you're actually able to um, extra extract, excrete the benzene from the lungs mm. through broccoli sprouts because of sulforaphane. So, so I would do broccoli sprouts. I would do lentils. I would do chia. And like, that's a great place to start. And, you know, more and more work, but I cover like everything from A to Z in my book, from azuki and arugula, um, to clover, radish, celery, um, broccoli, all the different kinds of lentils and peas, um, radishes, like so many things are sproutable. And this is not some exotic superfood that has to be flown in from Peru or Ecuador or Chile. Like this is stuff that we're familiar with that's abundant and ubiquitous and accessible. And, And sustainable. I mean, like, just take it, you know, if you think about the sustainability and I'm careful not to go down too many rat holes, right? But depending on who you ask, it takes 5,000 gallons of water to grow a pound of beef, right? Because you got to feed the cow over these years and grow the grain and feed the cow. Yeah, It takes, so 5,000 gallons for a pound of beef, maybe um, 50 gallons for a pound of broccoli, five gallons for a pound of broccoli sprouts of water. So yeah. just think, think about that, like use of resources. And and what do you do? You, so you, so you get these broccoli sprouts, they come in this, let's say a 35 pound bucket. Yeah. And 
you take them, you put them in one of these glass jars, you just cover them in water? Or you, you, it- so, you basically, you know, you take the jar, you yeah. know, you'd put two tablespoons of seeds in the jar. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of the new, the, um, the, the, please. So I, I'm going to show you um, broccoli, uh, the day two and the day seven. No, 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 no. The day two. So this is two tablespoons of broccoli sprouts on day two. Okay. Put them in the jar. First, you soak them like this. Then you shake off the extra water. And then, you know, you put them in an angle. So the extra water comes out. But you always uh-huh. want to make sure there's air able to go through. This is day two. Okay. And this, so- this is day five. So this, this is just like a now brand sprouting jar. And yeah. Uh, yeah, now foods with a stainless steel screen and lid. Yeah. And this is day five. It looks like a jungle in there. Yeah, day five from day two. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, like, and this is food. This is food. This is medicine. This is nutrition. Like, get on it. How many of those do you have going at any one time? Um, I guess right now I've got five going. Five of those jars. Okay. All right. So that's that's not too excessive on like the, the countertop space. And is that enough food for you? I mean, you smash an avocado on it, eat, yeah. eat a slice of nori, you know, yeah. have a piece of fruit. And yeah. look, I, I think, you know, we don't have an issue of like starvation in this country, right? We have an <laughs> yeah, issue of point. obesity, <laughs> Yeah. right? And I eat when I'm hungry. Yeah. Like I eat when I'm hungry, but I'll tell you that it's really hard to overeat sprouts because mm-hmm. when you're eating sprouts that are non seasoned, like you will eat them. And when the brain registers um, satiation from being full and nutrition, you're not going to overeat. But if you were to put salt on these, sugar on these, oil on these. Yeah, fry them. Fry (laughs) them. It's funny. Love it, love it. Well, guys, uh, pick up the Sprout book on on Amazon. Check out Doug's Instagram channel, at Doug Evans. Um, Doug, My my website is thesproutbook.com. Thesproutbook.com. Yeah, sign up for my newsletter. I'll be pushing out some sprouting information. Nice. And we're going to grab those, those resources you mentioned for, uh, for, for the people. And we'll put that in the description of the episode, anything else that you feel compelled to, to share or, um, talk about right now? Yeah. Look, I think that I really believe in free will Yeah, and I believe in doing your homework. Yeah. Right. So th- this is what's working for me. This is what's exciting for me. And I think the implications of this are really, really powerful. It's to me, what's mind boggling is that everyone in the world is an already tuned in to sprout consciousness. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the pandemic, you know, they're making ties right now into the number of COVID cases as they're analyzing the stool by looking at the microbiome, right? And they're making the the gut microbiome connections yeah. that that the more people that are sprouting, the more questions that are going to be asked, the more research that's going to be done. And like the easy thing for me to say is like um, sprouts are vegetables. So if you believe in whole food, plant-based diet, you believe in the power of vegetables, sprouts are easy. Mm-hmm. If you're already tuned in, like you're looking at how can you become more raw, more living foods, Sprouts are living foods. So mm-hmm. they fit that checkbox. Super right? high nutrient density too. Yes, yeah, super high nutrient density. High digestibility. So bioavailability. So sprouts contain micronutrients, phytonutrients, polyphenols, bioflavonoids, prebiotics, probiotics. Every single amino acid, you know, exists in, in the sprouts. Mm-hmm. So there's an amazing kind of world that to dig into about sprouts and they're fun, they're fast, they're easy. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't know what else to say. Like, I I don't want to feel like I need to sell anybody sprouts. Like I think the sprouts are going to be here long after us. 
And I, I will say that 2021 is a year of sprouts, right? In April 2021, when my book came out, sprouts were trending above juicing, above blending, sprouts were trending. And my, my little paperback book from an unknown, an unknown author is now in the sixth printing, right? And we just launched the audible version of the book Heck with a, a, a downloadable PDF that this is the year of sprouting. Like we're just starting to sprout and I hope that it continues and I feel it will. Well, Doug, thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge and wisdom. Uh, this has been a really fun conversation. I'm going to go pick up some of those uh, sprouting jars and get back into it. Um, appreciate you so much, guys. Pick up a copy of The Sprout Book. Go to thesproutbook.com and uh, follow Doug on uh, at Doug Evans Instagram. Doug, thank you so much. And hey, my pleasure, Anthony. Take care, buddy. Take care.